In this video, we are going to learn about junction box grouping. In order to perform junction box grouping, there are these six important rules that if you follow junction box grouping will become very easy. The rule number six is something which a lot of engineers and designers make mistake, but I'm very sure after watching the video, this will become very clear to you. And then we'll also at the end of the video, see a GB grouping checklist, which is available. If you want to download it now, also it's available in the video description. So let's get started. Understand where does junction box come in the overall big picture so if you see here there are various transmitters available which will be connected to your junction box from junction box which is connected in the field you will be going to your marshalling panel and from marshalling panel you will go to your control system the cable which is going from your junction box to your marshalling panel is generally a multi pair cable or a multi core cable and then that will go to your control system where the IOs will be segregated AI, AO, DI, DO cards will be available there so in this video we will focus on the JB part of it. As discussed, we'll first look at the first rule of junction box grouping, which is to have the location of the instrument available for the near junction box allocation. How does this work? So basically, if you see, this is your plot plan available. In the plot plan, instruments will be very much scattered at various places. So your plot plan is divided into various areas. So depending on the density of instruments, you assign junction boxes. For example, for these particular devices, you might be using this junction box, which is connecting it for a denser device you might have one junction box catering to one particular area but this is not it there are more important things to be considered for example if you see a junction box two major criteria which are used in projects is an isjb and an nisjb intrinsic safe jb and a non-intrinsic safe jb why is this important distinction available is because of the type of instrument for example if you say an is type two important areas one is the field area which is also considered to be the hazardous area and generally the control system area which is the safe area where you will be having your marshalling panel control system etc available now there is a big straight line which is dividing both of them here is where you have an important component called as a barrier which comes into place so the system which is giving its out output goes to the barrier and from the barrier it will go to your final field devices the basic work of a barrier is basically to limit the power so the output which goes to the field is not having the power enough to have sparks or explosion and hence these devices require lesser amount of safety that is why they are called as inherently safe devices NIS devices are those devices where there is no barrier so there these devices require more amount of power and if there is more amount of power there is high chances of sparks coming into it and because of high sparks there is a very great chances of an explosion happening and that is why what we need to do as engineers is that we need to contain this thing this is called as an exd certified jb so the jb is made so thick that even if an explosion or a spark happens inside the jb it is contained and it will not come outside the jb so this is the phenomenon of an nis jb now we learned two important things an isjb is where the is devices will be connected for example transmitters etc and nisjb is where devices like solenoid walls magnetic flow meters which require higher power will then be allocated to nisjb but remember that this is not the only criteria certain clients might want it to be even more segregated for example you might have this group signal level so here for example jb here is basically allocated as per the same signal level type so an aio will have 4 to 20 milliampere so that is one type of jb the other jb is didio jb etc some clients want wanted to be even more segregated like for example certain saudi aramco projects require such distinction where you have ai ao di do jb separately available so basically you have to read the design basis in depth but generally we go with is and nis jb which is the most optimum cost effective choice to go forward with now the third one which is important is triad cables why is triad cables coming separately if you see here for example for an isjb you will have two terminals which is coming and then you will have shield so basically positive negative and shield but when it comes to a triad cable the connection is different you will be having three particular wires to be connected and then the shield to be connected and that is the reason it is preferred sometimes to have a separate triad cable jb which can only cater for triad cables one common example is a lot of fire and gas detectors are triad cables rtd is triad cable so a lot of such devices can be connected in their separate triad cable jb next important criteria is something called as a power jb 
why is it important for a power gb to be exactly allocated you see here for example you have is and nis gb then you have a triad gb but a power gb has to be kept separately for example let us take a magnetic flow meter that is externally powered so you will have its normal signal 4 to 20 milliampere signal coming here however it has to also be externally powered with either 24 volt dc or ac current so that comes from a separate power gb the next criteria is to understand the JB spare capacity. You can't just load the JBs completely. For example, if you see here, here's a junction box available. In a junction box, generally, let us imagine it to be 10 or 20 pair cables are being installed in one junction box. So you will have to keep 20% of it as spare capacity. However, if you are starting the project, I would highly recommend that you keep a 40% spare because most projects, the 20% spare gets utilized by the end of the project. So basically, after the project is completed, if you want to have more 20% spare I, st I prefer personally to have it as a 40% spare at the start of the project the final thing is very important and a lot of engineers miss is going to have the sill tags require generally a separate junction box for example if you see here a sill loop which is generally a typical two out of three configuration which we'll see here is basically three transmitters communicating to your control system the way this loop works is basically if the transmitter signal goes to the control system and the control system agrees then it will have a final control element which will take the appropriate action for example if the first transmitter says yes but the other two say no then as per voting two of them have to say yes for an action to be taken so for this case the control system will give an answer as no to the valve to operate however if the output of two transmitters is yes then your control system will give an output as yes to the control valve to work now why is the reason available to have three transmitters is that because if there is any mistake in one transmitter there is a lot of noise in it and that is why the sill action should not be be taken unless and unless it is completely verified but how does this affect junction box grouping it is advised that the cables must go through different jb basically they should have an independent path so if one transmitter is facing any source of noise it will not affect the other three the other three will be safe of noise because the path is generally independent which is most noises are in the field so basically because of having a different path you can easily identify that oh one transmitter is facing an issue because of the noise in the field path so that is why it is recommended to have an independent path as much as possible in the project while doing your junction box grouping here's the link to have a junction box grouping checklist which is available for you which will be in the video description and also here's the summary of all the six points that is required for junction box grouping